So in my last few videos, I've spent a lot of time really trying to understand Marlin 2.0, understanding the new features, what works together and what doesn't. And now that I'm done with all of that research, I think it's finally time to install some new main boards in this printer. So in this video, I have the Big Tree Tech E3 Mini V2.0, and I have the Big Tree Tech SKR V1.4 Turbo. Both of these, from a feature perspective, are really good options for this printer, and I'm going to be comparing it to the silent board, which is already installed in this machine. Now, in this video, I'm going to go step by step how to install these, how to install a new display, which you got a couple of different options for. And the big thing is I really want to go over how to read one of these wiring diagrams so that not only do you understand how these boards are installed, but in the future when you want to install these, you can read one of these schematics and get this board installed for yourself. So without further ado, let's get started on these upgrades. That's what I'm doing right here today on Curzy Fabrications. Let's go. Future Chris here, I wanted to cut in and let you know that after filming all of this content, I realized I had way too much for just one video. So I've divided it up into four different parts to make it a lot easier for you to digest. Now in this first part, I'm going to be doing a comparison of the different boards available and show you what the similarities and differences are between them to help you decide which board you may want to choose. In part two, I'm going to be doing a detailed installation of the Mini E3 version 2.0. And then in the third part, I'm going to be doing an installation of the V1.4 Turbo. Then in the fourth part, I'm going to take a look at the test prints that I've pulled off all of my boards and compare the performance of them. Is there a difference between printing with one board over another board when it actually comes to the results of your prints? So I hope you enjoy the format that I've set up for you here and let's get started. So as I mentioned, I've really spent a lot of time in my past few videos really going through Marlin 2.0, understanding what the features are, what they do, how they work, what works together, what doesn't, and I really wanted to walk you through that whole debugging process. Number one, it was taking up a lot of my time. Number two, I thought that that process would be educational to people that may not have worked on debugging firmware before. So if you're interested in that, I'm going to have the playlist up here. Uh, it's going to have a couple of videos that I did covering the Marlin process, as well as an interview that I did recently with Scott Latine, who is the project maintainer of the Marlin project. I hope you enjoy those videos. Now, for this video, I'm not actually going to be covering my Marlin configuration. What I'm going to have for you, after you've seen all this, go check out the description. I'm going to have the configuration files all set up in a Git repo over at GitHub. I'm going to have just the configurations for you, files for you if you just want to download those. And I'm going to have binaries for you, whereas if your setup is as close to stock as mine is, if all the motion is relatively the same, then you'll be able to just download that binary, put it on an SD card, and put it on your board. You'll be ready to go with no additional configuration. If there are some additional asks from the community on can you enable this feature and if you can enable that feature, I will also work to enable those and put those binaries down below. Now, I don't plan on doing a long-term maintenance on this firmware, so as we move forward, if there are new versions of Marlin you feel like you need or features you need, you know, ping me on it, I'll see what I can do. But uh, please, take those binaries, take those configuration files, use those as starting points to get yourself up and running. So without further ado, let's take a look at these main boards and check out the difference. So the first thing I wanted to look at was I generated this awesome table and I'm going to put it up here on the screen that actually shows the difference between all of these different main boards. And what I tried to do in this table was to come up with all of the major differences that I cared about, which is probably a lot of the major differences that you're going to care about. So in this table, you'll notice I've got everything from the processor that's on the board, the what type of processor that is the frequency or the operational speed of that processor, 
I'm going to have the flash size of the processor. Then I'm going to include whether they're onboard steppers or add-on steppers. And then down below that, you're just going to see a list of different features that each of these boards have. Everything from whether they have dual Z onboard or whether how many fans they've got, that kind of thing. So starting out with the stock or silent crowding board, you'll see that we have an AT Mega 2560 8-bit processor that runs at 16 megahertz. It has a 256 kilobyte flash on board. It has onboard steppers, either the four A4988s if you're running the stock board or five TMC 2208s if you're running the silent board. Now those 2208s on that board, those are going to be in standalone mode. You cannot configure them via the firmware, but they are in silent mode. And as I've shown you on my printer, they work rather well. You should be familiar with most of the functionality of this board. This is kind of going to be our baseline because almost all of these features on this board are being used by this printer. So this is kind of the minimal configuration we'll need with either of these boards. Now, good to know up front, both of these boards do have the minimum features we need at least and we'll have no problem adapting the wiring to these new boards. Now moving on to the Big Tree Tech SKR Mini E3 version 2.0. This board is our first 32-bit board. It is a Cortex M3 core that runs at 72 megahertz. Now the flash is really interesting on this board because by default it is a 256 kilobyte flash. Well, that's kind of small for what we're doing. And what people have figured out is that they're technically 512 kilobyte flash on the board, but technically you're only supposed to use 256 kilobytes. Now, I have heard of no one having any problems trying to use the full 512 kilobytes. I don't know if you are going to have problems. You'll see in my configuration in order to get enough functionality into the board that I wanted, I did have to use that 512 kilobytes. So I understand that this is confusing. Is it a 256 kilobyte or 512 kilobyte part? Well, the answer is kind of yes. Uh, it is a 512 kilobyte part. Now, whether that part has then been downgraded to 256 kilobytes because there was a problem in half of that memory or whether it was just binned into a lower part just so that they would have a lower cost part. It's really hard to say and it honestly may be up to the board you have. So uh, as far as configuration go, if you find yourself having some weird flash issues or some weird issues in your printer and you have enabled that 512 kilobytes default, you may have to go down to 256 kilobytes in order to resolve those issues. That's going to have to make you cut out features unfortunately and my configuration is going to be that 512 kilobytes so that I can leave everything turned on for now. So why didn't I go with the V1.2 version of this board? Well, that one's pretty easy. So the V1.2 version of this board does not have dual Z steppers. So it means you have to use a breakout splitter and worry about finding some place in the chassis to put that. Not only that, but this board actually has a few more features that the 1.2 doesn't have. So what I'd recommend, go with the 2.0, particularly if you can get your hands on it. It's going to be a better board because it's better designed for this printer and you're going to get some new features out of it. Uh, and the cost difference is minimum. We're talking like $7 from what I saw. So as far as the other features are concerned, it has the dual onboard Z, as I mentioned. It has onboard TMC 2209 chips, which is the latest and greatest everybody's looking for. Uh, those TMC 2209s do have soft end stops, which we will not be using because this printer has terrific clicky switch end stops. So we don't need those soft end stops on this printer. So it does have filament runout detection on board, so we won't have any problems with that. It also has NeoPixel support, which I can talk about in a future video. Um, and that's going to be about it. The other thing you'll want to note on this board is that there is only one expansion port for the uh, character displays. So a standard two port character display will not work on this board and you will have to have what's called a CR10 style display or one of these big tree tech TFT displays which is what I'm going to be using. The other two big differences between the V1.2 to the V2.0 is that the V1.2 has one controllable fan and one always on fan 
whereas the V2.0 has two controllable fans. Now, I'm gonna show you that in a bit, but that second controllable fan we can do in firmware is set that as a controller fan that only cuts on when we're printing to cut down that idle noise of the printer. The other big difference between the V1.2 and 2.0 is that on the 2.0, we have what's called a dedicated EEPROM. Now that EEPROM is where your printer is going to store its settings, as opposed to on the 1.2, and be honest, even on the V1.4 Turbo, it's going to actually have to take part of your flash memory to store your EEPROM settings. And well, number one, we've already talked, we don't like to use part of our flash for that. Uh, but particularly on a reduced flash memory board like the E3, we really don't want to take any extra flash that we have to for our corruption issues, whatever the case may be. That dedicated EEPROM is a nice feature. So moving on to the SKR V1.4 and 1.4 Turbo. Now let's get this out of the way first. The only difference from the 1.4 to the 1.4 Turbo is the clock speed. They have different processors on them. One is an LPC 1768, one is an LPC 1769. They have the, essentially the same processor, just running at different frequencies. So we have 100 megahertz versus 120 megahertz. Whether this makes a big difference in performance, I doubt it. But from what I could tell, I think that 1.4 standard is even already being phased out because of that. Because uh, when I was doing pricing search, as you'll see at the bottom of this table, they were essentially the same price. So I think that 1.4 is going away. The 1.4 Turbo is probably here to stay. And it's only, even if you had to find it, you know, early on, it was only a couple of dollars more. I don't know why you just wouldn't go ahead and pay the money. Get a faster board, a little bit more future proofing, just kind of like if you're buying a faster processor for your PC. Now, as you probably already know, or maybe you don't, the 1.4 Turbo is a big step up in terms of features over the E3 Mini. Now, whether these features matter to you is going to be very much dependent on what your goals are for your printer. Are you happy with where it is today? Do you want to do future expansion? That kind of thing. So looking at the table, first of all, we see that the V1.4 board is a board that does not come with the drivers on board. The drivers are add-on and you get these little stepper stick add-ons that you're going to just pop in to the board itself and those can be changed out in the future in case there's any advancements in stepper driver technology that you're going to want to bring into your printer. Now in terms of a lot of the other features, notice that it does have an extra driver on board. Now you can use that driver to either drive your Z screw separately, or you can install a separate extruder on your printer in the future. Now, for my configuration, I am going to continue to drive both of these Z screws off of one driver. I've had zero issues on any printer ever driving two Zs off of one driver before. I'm gonna keep doing it that way, and I'll tell you why. I plan on doing another mod to this to add that secondary extruder. Now, so that, what that means to you is that if you download my firmware, my firmware is going to just have both of those on that one Z stepper. So if you also only want to buy four stepper sticks, you can just do that if you're not going to be using that uh, second extruder. So looking at the other features as compared to the Mini E3, you'll notice that it has three always on fans on this board, which is terrific because that's going to give you a lot more expansion if you want more cooling. It has the same number of end stops because it has the same number of axes. It has fil filament runout detection for both E0 and E1. Does not have a dedicated EEPROM like I mentioned, but this board does have a actual 512 kilobytes of memory, so you shouldn't have any problem using that flash memory for some of your EEPROM. You got, you'll have plenty of space. Other than that, it has some more expansion. It has plenty of support for any type of display you wanna put on here. I forgot to mention earlier that this display from Big Tree Tech, this is the TFT 3.5 V3.0, and this is going to utilize both of these outputs on your board 
or the single output on your E3, but it also has the touchscreen support, which is going to use an additional wire that's going to connect to another port on these boards. So it has both modes, both touchscreen and text mode, so you're going to use both of those connectors. So that about does it for features. Let's spend a minute and talk about the total cost of upgrading to any of these options. Now, first of all, the silent board from Creality. I did an entire video covering that board up here, and that is a drop-in replacement on this printer. It uses the existing display, uses all the existing wiring, and it just it's a plug-and-play solution. So total cost of ownership there is going to be $65 for an upgrade. You're not going to have to do anything else. Just drop it in. No cutting of your case, anything like that. I can say that the quality of that board is very good. The smoothness of those 2208 steppers, it really does show up in your prints. And so I can't say enough good things about that one. It's been carrying me for quite some time now. The next option, of course, is the mini board. The Mini also has the steppers on board, so there won't be any step sticks or anything like that you have to buy, but it is going to need a new display. You're going to have a couple of options. You're going to have what's called a CR10 display. It's not this one, but it looks a lot like this. It is a one-wire display similar to what the CR10 uses. You can buy that for about $23, I found, and then the board itself is going to be about $46 according to the prices I found on Amazon. So what are we talking? We're talking about $69 or so for this solution. Now what's great about this board, it is a also a drop-in replacement as far as not needing to cut, not needing to print any adapters or anything like that. It drops in, it fits into the printer uh, using the existing holes that are already there. Your USB and your SD card come out where they have been on your other board. So take that into consideration. It's an easier install. Again, it's about $69, which is about, you know, three or four dollars more, unless you want to go with the nicer display from Big Tree Tech. This is a $36. So that's going to be another $13, putting you in the neighborhood of about $83 or so, I think is what we're talking about if you go with that solution. So the last option is going to be the SKRV 1.4. This is going to be the most expensive option. Now, if you're going to go with this one, you can buy it with the steppers. They come separate as these little stepper sticks, as I've shown here, but they are an add-on. And from Amazon, and I'm going to include this link down below, I like the 2208s. There's no feature on the 2209 that you need on this printer. And so save yourself a little bit of money. Go with four 2208s or five 2208s if you think you need that extra stepper driver. But for a comparably decked out board, it's going to be $52. That includes your 2208 stepper drivers. I will include the link as I mentioned. Uh, and just like with the mini board, you are going to need another display, but you have a couple of different options. Number one, you have this 12864 display, which is the two wire display. These are cheap displays. So if you're looking for something like this, these are about $17 displays, nothing to that. So if you go with the cheap display option, you're going to be at about $79, so about $10 more than the other solution. And if you go with, again, the Big Tree Tech uh, board, that's going to be a $36 display. So we are once again going to be adding about an extra $20 on top of that. So I think we're getting closer to the $100 range. But again, that's kind of what we're looking at here, kind of gradually stepping up. You can go with the stock option, which is going to be your cheapest and easiest. You can go with the mini option, which is kind of your middle of the road. It's got not quite as much performance as this board, but it is a easier drop-in solution than the high-end board. And then you have your high-end board, which is going to take a little bit more work to install, uh, but will give you a little bit more expansion and a little bit more performance. So kind of what you're used to in technology, you pay a little bit more, you do a little bit more work, you get a bit more out of it. So it seems like my mental math got off a little bit in that last section, so I wanted to film a small correction here. But as you can see from the board, if you take the Mini E3, which has four 2209s, and you compare that to an SKR V1.4 with only four 2208s, the prices are almost exactly the same depending on which display you choose. So, I mean, from a cost perspective, 
This means that you can pretty much go with either board depending on whether you need that additional expansion, whether you're going to be adding that fifth stepper for either a dual Z or for an extra extruder, or whether you need some of the expansion ports that the V1.4 offers. So I just wanted to film this small correction. I think everything else I said is pretty accurate, so let's keep going with the rest of the video. So I think I've about covered this as much as I can. This was the intro. Let's get to work. I'm going to start with the Mini E3 first. We're going to do the upgrade right here. I'm going to walk you through that process. I have the board schematic that I'm going to show you how I figured out how to transfer those stock wires over to the new board. Let's get going. And that's where we're going to pick up next time. So in this video, I hope I covered everything that you need to know about the similarities and differences between these boards when it comes time to select one of them for your 3D printer. Now in the next video, as I mentioned, I'm going to cover the installation of the Mini E3 V2.0, followed by the installation of the V1.4 Turbo. Then we'll do a comparison to see how all of these boards perform when looking at their test print. So I hope you stay tuned through all of those videos. I think that the information I'm going to share in those will not only help you understand these boards, but boards in the future. So again, thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already hit the like button, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't done that. And if you want to support this channel, I have the usual links to my PayPal and as well as becoming a Patreon member. Hey, I'm about to hit my first big Patreon goal. If you want to join up, I'm going to be trying to do some live streams exclusive for Patreon members. We're even going to try something like a Zoom meeting or something so that I can get your feedback and we can sort of talk as a group with just the Patreon supporters. So again, thanks for joining me here. Thanks for supporting this channel with your views or with your patronage and I will see you next time as we continue this journey to upgrade the Ender 5 Plus printer with some new 32-bit boards. Thanks for watching.